and welcome to another episode of Boring History. My name is Angela and today we're going to be hearing the tale of the 12 labours of Hercules. A couple of points before we get started. Before Disney and the Romans came up with the name Hercules, our dear friend was actually called Heracles and he was a character out of Greek mythology. However, today, for the sake of this video and the YouTube algorithm, I'll be referring to him as Hercules, but just know that deep down in my heart, what I really mean is Heracles. Also, if you're listening to the order of the labors as I tell them and you're thinking that they sound slightly off, chances are that you're right, but I'm also right because there are a few different variations in regards to the order that Hercules performed the labors. I did try to choose the most common version, I think. We'll see. In case you're interested, I have put a link down below to a translation that somebody's done of Euripides' version of Heracles. Uh, that's my personal favourite version. Obviously, Euripides was one of the great Greek tragedians, um, but that's a topic for a different time. <laughs> Finally, before we begin, a little bonus fact for you. If you're ever looking at any Roman or Greek artwork and you see a guy with a lion skin on his head or nearby holding a club, that's Hercules, because even though modern TV like to portray him with a sword because swords are cool and clubs are like for cavemen, the OG Hercules definitely preferred his club. And on that note, let's move on with our story. Hercules was the son of Zeus and a mortal woman. Now, if you know anything about mythology, you know that Zeus was actually married to Hera, but Zeus was also kind of a ladies' man. So, when Hera found out that Zeus had had another baby to another mortal woman, she was understandably pretty pissed off. Hera hated the baby, she tried to kill it with some snakes and did a few other things, but nothing seemed to work out for her. Fast forward to a time period where Hercules has settled down, has got a wife of his own and some kidlets, Hera finally works out the ultimate way to punish him. Using magic, she makes him go temporarily insane and Hercules ends up killing both his wife and his children. Understandably, once the magic wears off and the insanity goes away, Hercules is absolutely distraught at what he's done. He goes and looks for the god Apollo and asks him what he should do to seek penance. The oracle, speaking on behalf of Apollo, says that he has to go and find the king Eurystheus and complete whatever tasks he sets for him. Now, Eurystheus isn't the nicest guy and he sets these tasks or these labours for Hercules, fully expecting him to fail. Also, originally there were actually only 10 labours, but as we'll see, Hercules kind of cheats on two of them, so as punishment, two more get added to the list. So, labour number one, kill the Nemean lion and bring back its skin. The Nemean lion was this seemingly immortal lion that ordinary weapons hadn't been able to kill, so it'd just been gallivanting all around the countryside, wrecking havoc. Hercules tracks the lion for like 30 days and eventually finds it sleeping in a cave where he sneaks in and ends up strangling it to death because weapons don't work. This whole weapons don't work on it thing is also an issue when Hercules wants to skin the lion because the knife can't cut through. Then in a stroke of genius Hercules is like hey I know I'll use the lion's own claws and I'll skin it that way. Delightful. Hercules then returns to Eurystheus with his prize, and the king, who at this stage had fully expected Hercules to be dead, becomes so scared of him that he bans him from entering the city. He also has this giant bronze jar made so that he can jump in and hide every time Hercules is around. Labour number two is to defeat the Lernian Hydra, which is this super annoying water snake thing where every time you chop off a head, two more would appear. Now the Hydra has Hercules stumped for a while, and it isn't until his nephew, Aeolus, who's come along for the trip, comes up with the idea that every time Hercules chops off a head, they'll sear it with fire to prevent the stump from growing two more heads, that they're able to defeat the beast. Now, technically Hercules had help, technically this counts as cheating, therefore one more task is added to the list. During this labour, Hercules also dips his arrows in the blood of the Hydra, which is super poisonous and is going to be super useful later on. For labour number three, Hercules has to catch, not kill, the Cyrenian Hind. A hind is a type of deer, and this particular deer belongs to the goddess Artemis. Therefore, it's super important that Hercules doesn't hurt her, because Artemis can be kind of a cow if you would piss her off. Hercules chases the hind, who incidentally has golden horns and bronze hooves, for an entire year. And it isn't until the deer is like, Oi bro, enough with the running, this is like the longest game of tag ever, I give up, that Hercules is finally able to catch it, thus completing labour number three. For labour number four, we're sticking with the theme of keeping animals alive, and Hercules is ordered to capture the bad-tempered Erymanthian boar. 
Now this labour also takes a really long time to complete because Hercules decides to stop and get drunk of some centaur wine. However, as with the other labours, Hercules does eventually manage to capture the boar and bring it back to Eurystheus. For the fifth task, Eurystheus decides to change tack because clearly forcing Hercules to run after all these dangerous beasts isn't having the desired effect. He's still alive. So instead he tells Hercules that he has to go and clean the Orgian stables. Now these were the largest stables in Greece and were filled with cows and sheep and goats and chickens. But more to the point, they hadn't been cleaned in years. Can you imagine the smell? Now cleaning wasn't typically the work of a hero, but turns out that our friend Hercules was a bit of an entrepreneur and he sees it as a business opportunity. Hercules doesn't tell King Orgius that he's been ordered to clean the stables, instead offers to clean them for a fee. Now given the state of the stables, the king would be stupid to not agree and Hercules manages to clean them by rerouting two rivers so they can flow through the middle of the stables and clear away all the crap. Literally. The king is happy, understandably, but once he finds out that Hercules was ordered to clean the stables, he doesn't want to pay. The matter is put before the courts and the courts rule that a deal's a deal. So Hercules gets his money, but then Eurystheus decides that the labour no longer counts, so the twelfth labour is added to the bottom of the list. Labour number six is to kill the Stymphalian birds, which Hercules manages to do with the help of Athena and those Hydra blood covered arrows from earlier. Labour number seven is almost a walk in a park compared to the others so far, it's to capture the fire breathing Cretan bull. Hercules manages this pretty easily and he captures the bull, brings it to Eurystheus, Eurystheus then decides to release the bull so that it can continue to wreak havoc amongst the countryside of Greece. Eventually the hero Theseus, who you may remember from the story of the Minotaur, comes along and kills the bull, but that is a tale for a different time. So moving on to labour number eight, capture the flesh eating horses of Diomedes. After a bit of messing around, Hercules manages to do this and again he brings them back to Eurystheus, who again decides to release them into the countryside so they can wreak havoc. Guy's got issues. For labour number nine, Hercules has to go and get the belt from Hippolyte, who is the queen of the Amazons. Now the belt is special because it had been a gift from the war god Ares. This could have been a really nice point in the story because for a brief moment, everyone gets along, Hippolyte was going to willingly give the belt to Hercules. But then Hera jumps in and is like, hey, no, things are not allowed to go this smoothly. She causes some drama, all hell breaks loose, and well, Hercules ends up having to steal the belt. The tenth labour is to steal, I mean, take the cattle from the monster Geryon, who is technically like the grandson of Medusa. In the grand scheme of things, this wasn't the most difficult of the tasks either. I mean, Hercules does have to fight a three-headed dog with his club, chase after a bull, deal with some more of Hera's crap. But aside from that, things go relatively smoothly. By the time we get to Labour 11, Hercules has been completing these tasks for eight years. But Eurystheus doesn't think that he's suffered enough and orders him to go and get the golden apples from the Hesperides. These apples have been a wedding gift from Hera to Zeus. It takes Hercules ages to even find the garden and he has to travel through Libya, Egypt, Asia, Arabia. Once Hercules does manage to get to the garden, he realises that they're guarded by some beautiful golden dragon. Luckily for Hercules, the god Atlas is also there. Atlas happens to be the father of the Hesperides and Hercules manages to trick Atlas into getting the apples for him. Problem solved. Which finally brings us to labour number 12, the most dangerous of them all. Obtain a pet dog. Well actually, kidnap Cerberus, the three-headed dog of the underworld who you may recognise from his debut performance in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Or Sorcerer's Stone, depending where in the world you're from. No mortal man had ever managed to journey to the underworld and return. However, Hercules was no mere mortal, and like Hagrid, he manages to wrestle Cerberus into submission and return to Eurystheus with his twelfth and final task complete. Also, in case you're wondering, Cerberus was allowed to return to Hades unharmed once everything was done. And there we have it, the 12 labours of Hercules. Thank you so much for coming on this epic journey with me. If you've managed to stick with it this far, please subscribe because I look forward to sharing even more boring history with you in the future. In the future.